So based on the feedback of the last video, we're gonna do two more tests today to see how accurate our readings really were last time, and I think you're gonna be surprised. So the main criticisms that we're addressing here are two things. One, that the sensor is getting wet with, with fuel and causing it to read uh, colder. So we're going to address that today. And two, that the sensor wasn't shielded or that it should have been moved into the top of the intake runner, not the bottom. So we're going to address these in two ways. First one, we're going to do some testing on latent heat and evaporation. And the second one, we're going to put a different sensor in the runner. So what I found, it's real simple to describe dry bulb versus wet bulb. Dry bulb is the temperature you feel right now. You're outside, it's great, you know, it's not really, it's what, 75 degrees, that's what you see on your phone every morning. That's what dry bulb is. Wet bulb is the temperature with humidity uh, corrected. So basically if it's raining out, it's going to feel colder, you're at the same temperature. Um, or the, I think the simplest way I can think of if you lick your finger. Your finger feels colder. Does it mean the air around your finger is colder? No, and I think this does signify the temperature probe that's in the bottom of the intake manifold. Um, so it is getting moist air. Some people are saying that I need to be moving that probe into the runners, which I'm actually going to do a test on. I don't believe that under full throttle it's getting soaked to the point where it's like, you know, people like think it's a river or something. It's measuring just the fuel. I don't think that's the case at full throttle. I think it's the moist air. So but I do think that the, the it's a wet bulb reading. So it's going to read cooler. So, yep, it feels colder. So it was a cool video I found out. I'm going to put a link in the description about how to test wet bulb versus dry bulb. So right here, we have a Fluke multimeter with, uh, I think it's a Type K thermocouple. And this here is just a little sheath. And that's an empty temperature probe. So if we turn this on, okay. So we can see it's 74 degrees outside right now. So right there, you can see how quickly it moved up. Now, if you blow on it, it's not changing. 72 a little bit not a whole lot. Now the idea is that this sock here, as you get this wet, it's going to wick the fluid up the sock and it's not going to be submerged because that's a submerged temperature uh, in which you can read with the thermometer and be accurate. So it has to do with humidity. So the first thing I want to do, I have water here and I have E85. Let's test the water. So I didn't dunk it all the way but it wicked all the way up. Yep, so my probe is it's right at the end of the tape. You can see it through there. Now, let's set this up here. Okay, so we're seeing about 62, 61 degrees. Let's push, push back out. Put the water sheath back on.
substantially colder. Okay, let's do the next test. Just dry it out here. The water. So the E85 looks just like water pretty much, but it's got a little, you can see the, there's a, a hint of blue, or purplish in there. Just the color of E85. It's not like gas, you can't see it real easy. I'm gonna grab this quick. Same test. Try to come through. I'm not going to dunk it, just going to let it wick up. Okay, I can see it came up all the way, and you can kind of tell. It's right. Okay, it's right now. So already you can see that the E85 is a bit colder. Came out of the fuel tank. So it's 59. Hey guys, as you can tell, I'm taking the intake manifold off. So, on a part two of the testing, so we already went over the wet bulb versus dry bulb. So we can see we do have our sensor mounted in the bottom of this intake here. We're gonna mount one back in the top of the runner. They do stick in a bit, so I'll probably remove it uh, once I'm done with testing. So pick up the sensor, since it's in our standard sensor from GM, uh, the quick pigtail. I think we're gonna go somewhere in here. It's half inch NPT, so it's quite a big hole. Um, it'd be cool to get as far away from the chart as possible. I don't know, what do you guys think? Here, here. Basically, people are thinking that uh, fuel will puddle in the bottom of here on our full throttle. And it, I mean, Okay guys, so a little change of plans here. Uh, what I found out is that the new RQD we installed in the runner is of a different resistance value. So what that means is that it reads the wrong temperature. So even just driving around on 70 degrees a day, it was really like 200 degrees. Um, so that's not even boosting or nothing. So I knew that's way off, especially when the hats, you know, read like 100. So 
what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna do a quick little test. And I took the, here's the, the one out of the hat. So we're gonna take the existing one out of the hat here. And you can tell, see it's got a cage around it to help protect the sensor. And here's the one we installed. Again, you can tell it's a little bit different sensor. You, see, you can see the, the actual element inside of there. I'm just gonna put this in the hat just to plug the hole. It's not gonna give me a good reading, so I won't hook it up in the video. Otherwise, it'll it'll look way hotter than it really is, because like I said this, this one reads way hot. It's just a diff different resistance reading. So we'll just use this to plug, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this sensor here. I'm gonna put a piece of aluminum tape over this to block the wind as it comes by this. Uh, it's kind of like, in the Real Tuners podcast, John Booley, he kind of mentioned that he was doing that in a way in, in the intercooler to help keep the mist, the humidity off the sensor. I mean, it's going to be atomized, so there's still going to be humidity. So we can't get a solid reading. But he said that made a big difference. And that's the same thing here. We have a cage and we have a sensor inside there. So I'm just going to tape a little bit on the forward side and I'll turn it so that lines up with the runner and then we're gonna give this a shot. So here we go. So here's the center. I marked the the two flats that are forward. They have the sen the aluminum foil protecting the sensor. It's still open on the bottom. Uh, it's just got like a little, it kind of comes over the bottom, but it's still open. It can breathe. So it's gonna slow the reading down a little bit, but really it should help protect it from the, any droplet uh, directly on that sensor. So if anything, uh, it's gonna benefit you guys who want this test to fail or show no difference. Um, but either way, let's give it a try here. And uh, yeah, we'll get this installed. Okay, so you can see I have the first black um, wedge. It's kind of like an arrow pointing forward. That's kind of the way I, I did it. There's two wedges, so that shows uh, the middle is the pointy part. So that's right in the direct stream. Uh, I'm gonna tweak it a little bit more. So now that's exactly right on uh, in line with that port. So let's install the one on the hat and let's go for a test drive. Oh. Okay, so we've been driving around for a little bit here. Uh, still coming up to temperature fully. Um, but instantly I can tell you that there is a difference. So here's the difference driving around. So again, it's the top one. The flashing one is just the uh, the bottom sensor, I, or the the hat that was disconnected. I didn't hook that back up, but you can see it's about 75, not in the 50s driving around because it's not being hit directly by the fuel. So we are coming up. We're coming up on the hill that we accelerated out of. So we're gonna get the same test, third gear from a stop. Hopefully, I hope that it'll stop a stop sign or stop light. Um, see the difference, and then we're gonna pull on the highway and make the same third gear pull and see how things go. But yeah, I mean, I can see you can see from the testing we did with the um, wet bulb versus dry bulb that, yeah, uh, the different. Oh, here we go. Here, here's the hill. Okay, dead stop. much again is only a couple couple pounds of boost but as I said what we can uh, get from this though is that from the wet bulb to dry bulb testing we did see um, about a 30 degree drop uh, which is uh, more than water it was only about 15 degrees colder than water maybe 20 I'll do the exact math put in the description here uh, but we're driving around at 70 72 which does kind of fit our math you know what we observed with the dry bulb testing getting the moisture off that sensor so we're pull up the highway here and get on the on-ramp and hopefully we can send her straight Woo! 
So what did we learn from today's video, other than the fact that there's a big old can of American whoop ass behind me? Well, a few things. We did prove with the testing for the wet bulb and dry bulb that alcohol does cool better than uh, water and the evaporation difference is about 30% more. So that does attribute to better cooling with E85 than with straight water. So that makes sense with the methanol when people inject methanol in the air intract and it's the higher concentration of methanol, the better it gets over water, straight water. Uh, the second thing that we proved is that, yes, it does bring it down when you blow air across a moist sensor, it does appear cooler, even though it doesn't get cooler. And we've seen that it was about a 30 to 40 degree drop for alcohol. And same thing is with the intake testing. We found that with the intake sh sensor shielded, it was only about 30 degrees warmer in the intake than what it was reading before with the wet sensor. Now, granted, there's still humidity, so it's not quite accurate, but it's very close. And we did see with testing is about 30 to 40 degrees cooler when you blew across the sensor with air. So kind of leave it up to you, but all I'm thinking here is that the intake sure enough is 30 to 50 degrees warmer, which just puts us a little bit above ambient still. So it's really not that bad, especially when you're coming down from 200 degrees and your air intake's like 110, something like that. Air to air intercooler, I mean, they struggle with that sometimes, unless you've got a really awesome one. So yeah, you probably get, would get a gain. You know, people have proven, uh, Richard Holdner, he just recently said that they picked up 50 horsepower with air to water. You know, and if, if you got a straight track car, that's great. You know, street car, if you want to boost around all the time, air to water doesn't work so hot. So, but I'll leave it up to you guys. Thanks for watching the video. Please like and subscribe.